good morning friends this is this is krishna let us continue learning uh, english vocabulary right the goal of these sessions is uh, to make you scholars scholars in english you have to be considered scholars in english by scholars in english a normal person will anyway consider you a scholar if you know few words but the goal is to be considered by a scholar who is already a scholar you should consider your pundit that is the goal we will learn in we will learn new words in very scientific way very exciting way we will go to the roots we will understand the derivation we will understand the history we will take examples we will put them in context etc lot of teachers they do it in very ordinary way they don't give examples they don't give context they don't tell about the history or derivation they just tell the words in alphabetical order and then give the meanings which is very sad they just expect students to by heart the words and the meanings and most of them they are oriented only towards clearing some exams be it ssc or bank pio ibps cat rrb any government exam gre gmat etc etc their goal is just to clear the exam but here our goal is clearing the exam will be just a by product it will be a cake work for you the real goal is to earn knowledge to become a scholar in english for lifetime right that is the goal let us continue our sessions with this goal okay we are learning with root words like i had said earlier most of the english words 70 80% are coming from greek and latin there are very the lot of root words but i have picked the most important 300 odd root words which will help in lot of places not just these words you will relate to other words which you come across also right let's continue cord cord means heart this is coming from latin uh, in greek also it is card c a r d what is cardiac cardiac is something related to the heart cardiac surgery we all know this cardiac surgeon that is coming from this cord accord a c c o r d accord is to grant to be in harmony to agree when you agree with someone basically your both of your hearts are saying the same thing right. you agree with heart right that's so accord is related to heart peace accord peace accord means peace agreement in accord with each other that means their hearts are together two things or two people being in accord with each other means their hearts are together they are in complete agreement accordance accordance is also similar word in accordance with the ideals that means which is in agreeing in agreement with the ideals of that society of that religion etc according according is also agreeing according according to so and so theory or according to so and so person that means as per that person or as per that person who is in agreement with this right accord means agreement that means someone's heart is aligned to that in according according to him that means his heart is saying this concord concord is also the same thing con plus cord it is also state of agreement it is harmony it is more like a formal agreement con con is together together hearts hearts together that is concord cordial cordial is warm very friendly very gracious anything that is cordial comes from the heart cordial greetings to friends cordial relations between two countries cordial welcome etc cordial is warm warm cordial is warmness okay originally cordial was meant as a stimulating medicine or drink that was thought to be good to the heart that is cordial this cordial related to heart discordant discordant is being at odds being at odds not in harmony it is actually conflict this plus cord discord is conflict 
the Supreme Court judgments are frequently discordant. That means they are not in agreement with themselves. Okay. So that's how it is related to God, which is uh, the judgments are not in agreement. Agreement is related to heart. Okay. Next is Kalp. Kalp is coming from Latin again. It means uh, guilt. We will know this very famous word which is culprit. Means someone who is guilty of crime. Who is a culprit? He's, he is the one who is guilty of crime. Culpable. Culpable is which is deserving blame or deserving to be condemned. Deserving to be blamed. The person was found guilty of murder. That means guilty of murder or, or the company was found guilty of culpable negligence in allowing the chemical waste to leak into the groundwater. That means they deserve to be blamed. Culpable, culpable homicide, etc. Culpable also means uh, simply guilty also. Culpable negligence is carelessness. So serious that it can become, it can become a crime. For example, uh, building a swimming pool. Building a swimming pool without any fence around it, without any wall around it. So that any any child can easily fall in and drown. That is called culpable, culpable negligence. It can become it, it can it can actually become a crime. Okay, culpability. This this is actually very important in law. Why? Because someone who intended to do harm. Originally, his intention was actually to do harm. Should get more punishment than who has done it out of negligence right who is just careless so culpable culpable is that's how it is important whether the murder was done culpable homicide with because of negligence or because of uh, real intention etc got it culpable homicide okay side we had discussed this earlier side is actually equal to killing homicide homo is man homo sapien homo sapien is man Home is man. Killing of a human being with another human being. This is called homicide. Fratricide. Fratricide is killing one's brother or sister. Side. Side. You remember this. Side is related to murder or killing. Frater. In Latin, frater is brother. Patricide. Patri. Parricide. It is killing of one's father. Okay. Side is killing. Pa patru is pitru. Pitru in Sanskrit. In Hindi also. Same root has gone into Latin and English. That is Pitru, Patri. Is uh, father. Patricide is killing of father. Infanticide. Infanticide is killing of infant. Infant. In plus fant. Infant is someone who cannot speak. That is infant. In is againest. In, in signifies opposite. Fant again in Latin it means speaking. Infant is someone who cannot speak. Infanticide is killing of someone who cannot speak. Or killing of someone who is a baby. Infant, soon after birth, infanticide. Okay. Exculpate. Culp is again guilt. Right. Exculpate is to clear from guilt, to clear from accusation, to clear from fault. That is exculpate. X is out of. X is away from. A suspected murderer may be exculpated by the confession of another person. Okay. Someone is suspected, but another person has confessed. That means the first person would be left. Is the left free. Right. So that is called exculpate. And exculpatory evidence is the kind of that defense lawyers are always looking for. Okay. Exculpatory evidence. Right. Well, during the scene of the crime, that person is somewhere else. That is exculpatory evidence. Inculpate. Inculpate is the opposite of exculpate. I did not mention it here. Inculpate is exactly opposite. Inculpate. Inculpate is to accuse or incriminate. To show evidence of someone else's, someone's, or uh, uh, to, to show evidence of someone's involvement in a fault or crime. It was his own father who finally inculpated him. Okay, inculpate is the opposite of exculpate. Inculpatory evidence, like exculpatory evidence. 
by inculpating someone else, an accused person may manage to excel, exculpate himself. Okay, here we are use, we are using both the words and in, by inculpating someone else. That means by accusing someone else, an accused person, the personal person who is accused, may manage to exculpate himself, may manage to free himself from guilt. Okay. Generally, during uh, court uh, proceedings, the prosecution can often encourage the defendant to inculpate his friends in return for a lighter sentence. Okay, bring the other uh, uh, other people who are involved in the crime. If you are able to bring those people, then your sentence would be reduced. That is, that's how they encourage uh, defendants to inculpate their friends. Okay, this is one more called uh, Mia Kalpa. Mia Kalpa. It is acknowledgement of error. Mia Kalpa. Through my fault. In Latin, it is called through my fault. I apologize. It was my fault. We use it in this way. Okay. Mia Kalpa. Next is dict. Dict is actually to speak. A dictionary. What is a dictionary? Dictionary is a treasury of words for speaking. Okay, dict is about speaking. Dictionary is the list of all words that are used for speaking. And uh, what is a contradiction? Contra is against. Speaking against. That is contradiction. Dict is speaking. Contradiction is uh, speaking against. What is diction? Diction is the choice of words. Diction means uh, the choice of words. Or CEO is determined to appear in some TV ads. But he first needs to work on his diction. Because his diction is not good. His, uh, the way of speaking is not good. The clarity of speech is not there. There is no clearness, correctness, effectiveness. So then what the CEO has to do? He has to work on his diction. There will be coaches that are available. Vocal coaches. He has to work with a vocal coach. Okay. When your English teacher complains. And, and an English teacher complains about the sum of the words uh, that a student uses in an essay. Mostly she is talking about the diction. Okay. That is uh, diction. Then edict. E-D-I-C-T. Edict is the official announcement that has the force of a law. It's an order or a commandment. Official say. Official saying. Officially speaking. In fact, addiction, A-D-D-I-C-T, not just addict, addict, A-D-D-I-C-T, addiction, addiction to alcohol, addiction to cigarettes, etc. This addiction is also related to the same dict. Why? Because someone who is addicted to alcohol, they always talk about alcohol, they always think about alcohol, etc. They are always speaking about the same thing. That is addiction. That is so close to the heart that they always speak about that thing. That's how this world was created, addict. Okay? Jurisdiction. Juris. Juris is uh, uh, jurisdiction is about who has the power uh, to say things. The power or right to control or exercise authority. Who has that authority? The territory where that power may be exercised. Generally this comes in uh, technical legal matters. Which court will hear a case? Which law enforcement agency can get involved? Okay, these are technical matters, jurisdiction, jurisdictional matters, or which uh, this crime concern comes under jurisdiction of which court or which police station. Okay, or is it a juvenile court? Is it a federal court, etc. Who who has the authority to say things here? Who has the authority to dictate or uh, to give order? Okay, order is equal to saying, right? Who has the authority to give order? That is jurisdiction. Dictum. Dictum is a formal authoritative statement. Dictum is also wise saying also. Any piece of wisdom that is also called as a dictum. For example, the perfect is the enemy of the good. Okay, if you try for perfect to become perfect and uh, you will delay the things, then even the good will not come out fast. 
right? You delay the good to become perfect. So that's why people say perfect is the enemy of the good. Buy low, sell high. This is also a dictum. This is a kind of piece of wisdom. All politics is local. This is a saying, right? So dictum is kind of saying also. One is formal expression or opinion or authoritative statement. The other is kind of saying. Then gno or gni. You all know this word gnanam in Hindi or Sanskrit or all Indian languages, right? Gnanam is knowledge. The same root word is coming here. Gnanam, gna is gni or gno in Latin. Recognize. Re plus cogni. Recognize. Re is again. Again, no. Knowing again. Recognize is when you have the knowledge of something. Right? You recognize someone or you can recognize something. You are able to do it again. That is recognize. Ignorant. Igna. E plus na. Agna. What is agnanam? Who is, who, who, agnanam is exactly equal to ignorance. Right? Lacking knowledge. Ignorant. In, in, in Sanskrit, it is ag agnana. In uh, English, it has become ignorant. Okay? Not knowing. Cognitive. Cognition. This is having to do with the process of knowing. It is including awareness, judgment, understanding, etc. Anything based on factual knowledge that has been or can be gained by experience. That is cognition. Cognizant, the, the company, that is a big, big company, right? Cognizant. It is related to knowledge. They named it that way. Cognitive abilities. Okay. A child's cognitive abilities are highly dependent on his or her upbringing and happiness. Okay. The child's creative development or cognitive abilities, the ability to think or to make decisions, they are all, they are all dependent on how they are grown up. What is their social status, emotional status, how happy they are, etc. Cognitive science. Cognitive science is a growing field of study that deals with human perception, thinking and learning. Okay, that is cognitive science. Next, agnostic. A person who believes that, uh, uh, who, who, who doesn't exactly follow any religion, but he feels there is some supernatural power. Okay, he, he, there is some supernatural power. Who believes that whether God exists is not known and probably cannot be known. He doesn't say God uh, God is not there, but he doesn't say God is there also. Both of them were always agnostics, but their children, they always attended uh, temples or churches, etc. Agnostic is a recent word, which, is, which has come into place from 1870. Agnostic is a recent word. That's all. Incognitive. Incognitors. In plus cognitive. In disguise. With one's identity concealed. Identity which is hidden. Which is kept secret. That is incognito. Incognito mode in uh, Google Chrome also you know, right? Where you hide it. Incognito. Whatever you are searching, that will be hidden. Google will not look into those. That is incognito. There is a famous Greek story. The god Zeus and Hermes. They visit a village. Incognito to test the villagers. They visit a village in another form. They visit they, they visited that village in as, as poor travelers. And what happened? All the villagers, every whole household uh, turned them away. They didn't offer them food. Okay. Then, except one household, which was that of Bacchus and Philemon. These two are old couple. This is very elderly couple. They are very poor themselves. But they provided these travelers, these disguised travelers, these incognito travelers, that is the gods, Zeus and Hermes, with, with a feast, with whatever that they have, whatever little food that they have, they provided a feast with this, to these to this gods. Then the gods revealed themselves. They showed their true forms. And then they rewarded this couple very generously for their hospitality. And then they destroyed the other part of the village. 
who are all the others in the village, right? This is a very famous uh, story, mythical story from the uh, Greek mythology, right? In this in this story, these two people come incognito, incognito is in another form. Prognosis. Prognosis. Prognosis is is a forecast of the disease. Pregna. We know this word, right? What is pregna? Pregna. Pregna is wise. Who is knowing? Who is intelligent? Who is learned? Etc. Prognosis is the same thing. Pra plus gna. Who can pro? Pro is into future. Who can look into future? Prognosis means knowledge beforehand. How a situation will likely turn out. Initially, it was strictly a medical term. Okay. That means how the disease will soon turn out to be. It used to be in that context. But now, uh, we use it in multiple places. Prognosis uh, about the economy. Prognosis about the climate. Prognosis about atmosphere, etc. etc. Okay. Re relate this word with pregna. It's actually related to that word. Okay. We have learnt about speaking. That is dict. We learnt about knowledge, that is Gna, Gna, Gni, Gno, etc. Now let's learn some words about writing, that is Graph. Graph is to write. Biography. Biography is written about someone, is a written document of someone's life. Bio. Okay. That is biography. Discography. Discography is, is written list of recording on uh, CDs, right, on discs. That is discography. Autography. Autography is Autograph or para, paragraph. Okay. Auto is self. Self writing. Autography. Autography is uh, someone who likes autographies. One uh, autograph is a signature. Autography is about the life story when that same person writes about himself. Autography of Mahatma Gandhi, for example. That is autograph. Autography. Similarly, photography. Taking of photographs. Writing of photographs, that is. Okay. Calligraphy. Calligraphy. Graphy is writing. Calligraphy is art of producing beautiful handwritings. Very beautiful handwritings. Kali. Kali. Kali is beauty. Even in Bengal and Sanskrit, Kali is beauty, right? Kali Mother. Okay. Kali in Greek, it is also beautiful. Okay. Calligraphy. Calligraphy is beautiful handwriting. Calligraphy has existed in multiple cultures. Indian, Persian, Islamic, etc. But Arabics put, they put a particular very high value on beautiful script. Okay. And in East Asia, calligraphy has long been considered a very major art. They use different pens, they use different nymphs, white nymphs, etc. etc. That's a different, uh, different art. That is calligraphy. Hagiography. Hagiography is actually this one, hagiography, it is actually biography of science, biography that idolizes or idolizes, okay. Reading stories of saints or great people have always been a very popular pastime for centuries. Biographies, books containing short stories of uh, saints and famous personals, colorful, uh, colorful books, colorful stories. These are all are always best sellers. These books are called the stories are called hagiographies. Biography we discussed. Choreography. What is a choreography? Choreography is choreographer. Who is a choreographer? Who 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 plans or who composes dances? Right. What has it to do with uh, graph? What has it to do with writing? Okay. You all would have seen. Uh, uh, you all would have seen musical symphony, right? Musical symphony, big, big symphony. Yes? They consist of a uh, lot of players, a lot of violin players, a lot of flute players, a lot of drum players, etc. Et they all will be given some sheets on how to follow. Okay? On how to follow uh, the rhythm or how to follow the music, etc. Et they will be given written sheets because a symphony or any big musical composition, first it has to be written. Okay? That's how symphonies or concerts are conducted. Western concerts, Western symphonies and all. Similarly, choreography. Choreography nowadays, the ones that you see are normal composers. 
but choreography of a major ballet or a big uh, uh, big uh, big event initially it has to be written only which is if it, if it runs to an hour or more they always have to record okay they always have to record the the work in some notation okay tv talent shows is much different so they they, they, they don't need any recording but uh, but if it is a formal ballet right which runs for one hour or more they have to record they have to they have to make a record they have to make a written record of who will come first who will come go next and how do how do they do etc etc okay that's how choreography is also writing this mostly it started with ballet ballets are generally long okay in greek choreo is actually dance the dance which are running for long long times they have to be written how exactly the at the dance flows the plan of it okay that's how it is related to writing then let's get to the next word which is art we all know what is art in english also in latin also it means skill okay skill what is art is any skill any application of skill we also mean art art means clever okay so that's how there are a lot of words which are related to cleverness in art artful artful is very skillful artful skillful but uh, we use it in other ways also which is willy crafty sly artful solution it was an artful solution each side was pleased with the agreement but it was the liar himself who stood take who actually took the most amount of it that was an artful solution it's a very clever very deceptive solution the liar actually took the major amount but both the sides were feeling that it was a fair uh, fair agreement okay artful argument what is an artful argument artful argument is something that cleverly leaves out certain details and uh, plays up with others so to make a stronger case okay generally it is done uh, by lawyers artful arguments they leave out certain things Uh, but they use certain other things to make the case stronger that is cleverly crafty willy artifact artifact is simple object made by human workmanship a tool an ornament generally that represents a uh, that represents a culture or uh, or a stage in cultural culture's development that is artifact is a man made object generally generally it is used uh, in archaeological detection one of the things that make uh, one of the things that make humans unique is their ability to make and use tools ever since uh, the first rough stone axe that appeared around uh, some lakh years ago humans have this ability to make items or to make tools no other animal no other living creature has that ability or to that extent uh, like that of humans even crows they make their nests with some on small pieces or lot of birds make nests they create tools but uh, they are just uh, they cannot be compared with humans right so artifact artifact what it means is something made with skill that is made with uh, skill artifice artifice is a trick or a very clever skill or clever trick clever device the artifice that went into this jewelry is astonishing or the chef has used all his artifice to disguise the nature of the meat artifice is very clever skill they have gotten around the rules by a clever artifice the artifice of the plot is amazing okay then next word is artisan artisan is a skilled worker by the way artifice is used in arts because because lot of people lot of artists believe the art the greatest part of art is actually to conceal art to hide art right that is the greatest part of art lot of artisans actually believe this now uh, artisan artisan is a skilled worker or a craft uh, craft craft person 
who is uh, is well versed in arts that's an artisan right now let's get to the next word which is port port is actually very strong what is a port port is coming from latin it means strong so we use the same word which when when we mean fort also fort is a military building um, or a fort on the uh, fort on the hill etc because these are strong positions fortify fortify is actually to strengthen fort is to fort is strong fortify is to strengthen fortified by a good night's sleep and big big breakfast that is to strengthen or the fortified with vitamins you would see on a lot of this uh, novelis oil packs and all right fortified fortified by adding vitamins etc fortification is actually to make it uh, strong fortification by building walls the building of military defenses to protect a place against attack that is fortification a structure built to protect a place that is fortification the city's uh, fortifications had withstood powerful assaults by by catapults or by uh, by the opponent uh, opponent uh, blows right that is fortification forte forte is something that a person does particularly well that is their strong point that is their forte in the middle ages uh, when people used to fight with swords those time guns and all were not there right so people used to fight with swords swords now a uh, lot of swords used to break in the middle of battles okay so but in sword also there is one strong point the the strength of the sword or the strongest part of the sword is generally the one that is close to the handle and in the middle of the blade that that place that place is actually the strongest part which doesn't break now this 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 part which is close between the handle and the middle of the sword this part is called forte because it is something strong so it is the strongest part of the sword that is forte fortitude fortitude is mental strength mental strength fort is strength fortitude is mental strength that allows one to face danger pain hardship etc with courage courage in pain or adversity when there are difficulties that mental strength is called fortitude he is just too nice and we feel he will not have the fortitude to deal with the monsters in the office okay that means we are worried that he doesn't have the mental strength to deal fortitude we call it uh, backbone there is this famous philosopher plato he listed four essential human virtues one of them is fortitude the other three are prudence prudence is very good judgment second is justice justice ability to be fair in balancing your own interests our own interests and others interests that is justice first is prudent prudent is good judgment uh, justice the third is temperance temperance is how you can restrain yourself when you get angry how you control yourself that is temperance and the fourth one is fortitude okay fortitude is in times of adversity in times of difficulty how courageously you stand what is your mental ability that is fortitude these are plato's uh, four important human uh, human virtues next is the word cis c a s cis means to cut cut down or slay in in latin this is coming from latin what is incisor i n c i s o r incisor incisor is one of the big front biting teeth some animals have big incisors the front teeth are called incisors what is a decision decision is you cut off something right from previous discussion you cut off there was some discussion there was some uncertainty you cut off all of that and make a decision that is a decision i didn't include them here incisor 
I think I have included incisor and uh, decision. Yes, I have included them down. Decision and incisor. Incisor is, incisor is the front uh, cutting tooth, cutting teeth. Concise, concise, concise is what do you do when you concise a document or concise a book? Concise is brief and condensed. You cut out the unnecessary portions. Concise in statements, concise in expression, etc. Your teacher might ask you, our teachers ask us, right? Concise one page summary, like this. Concise is not just short or not just brief. It, it has to have the necessary information also. It is concise writing is not just short writing. It has to include everything. Concise writing is very easier to read and it must be, it, it is better organized and it is better also. So, concise is a very good skill. That is concise. Then, uh, there is some other word called excise. E-X-C-I-S-E. -E. Excise. Excise is to cut out, especially surgically. This is, this is mostly surgically. X is out. A writer may excise long passages of a novel. To reduce it to a reasonable length. That is X size. E X C I S C. X size is also cutting. Or we might say X size a surgeon may excise a large cancerous tumor or make a tiny excision to examine an organ's tissue. X size is about cutting. Or we also know X size taxes. That a government, uh, state government or central government that charges the manufacturers. Okay, that is also excise. Excise is cutting. Excise tumor is cutting the tumor. Incisive, incisive. Decision we had also already discussed. Incisive, incisive is impressively direct and decision. This directly cutting into the point, right? So a doctor uses a scalpel to make an incision into the skin that means he makes a cut cut into the skin so that's how uh, inciso is also also means cut cutting into the matter at hand a good analyst makes incisive comments about a new story cutting through the unimportant details and uh, a good critic incisively identifies a book's strengths and weaknesses so cutting to the point that is incisive incisive judgment or incisive remarks etc to the point it cuts into the point. Similarly, precision. Precision is ex precision. P R E C I S. C A S is here. He is here. That means cutting is involved. Exactness and accuracy. That is precision. He speaks with great precision. That means he is exact. He just cuts to the point. Precision is also used in uh, in measurement systems. That is, uh, precision means how good that particular measurement system. It gives the same result every time when you measure the same thing. Let's say you are measuring measuring the weight of something. And if it is 1 kilo, it should uh, the measurement system should give 1 kilo always. Right? That is precision. Consistently giving the same result. If at one time it gives 1 kilo, another time it gives 1.1 or 0.8 another time, then that is not precise. That measurement system is not precise so any measurement system it should have precision right in calculators also they mention this uh, the, the precision is to how many digits etc okay let's learn few more uh, a few more animal animal related words last time we learned few let's learn few more now apiary apiary is a place where bees are kept bees are red for their honey Apis in Latin means bees. Apple or orchids are excellent sites for apiaries because bees also keep the apple apple plants or apple trees productive by pollinating them. Okay, apiary has got uh, will will have lot of beehives. That is apiary. Caper caper means a playful uh, leaf. A playful leap or playful jump. Okay. Caper in Latin also means male goat. Capricorn, the zodiac sign. That is also derived from this word caper. Zodiac sign. 
Capricorn is the is the shape of the goat, right? So Capricorn is male goat. Capricorn, what does the male goat do? It leaps, it jumps, right? Goats are very frolic. Similarly, Capriol. Capriol is a backward kick done by a trained horse. Capriol. You'd have seen in movies and uh, pictures, right? Capriol. C A P. Capriol. This is a backward kick done by done by horses. These are trained horses. Capricorn. We just discussed. Capricorn is horned goat. It's a constellation. One of the zodiac signs is related to goat. Capricious act. Capricious. Capricious is is done with without uh, with a little talk. With a very little thought, capricious. Capricious, uh, they it shows sudden changes in attitude or behavior, changing his mind suddenly or behaving in unexpected way. This is related to behavior uh, that is similar to that of goat. Goats are not very consistent. They move here and there. They change directions very frequently. Goats are that's why difficult to rear. Whereas sheep, they follow that direction. If you take one sheep, remain a hundred sheep will follow the direction. Goats are not like that. They they are difficult to manage. They change their directions very frequently. So capricious is that who changes their mind very very frequently or very suddenly. That is capricious. Capricious act. Capricious working of fate. Fate is capricious, right? Suddenly some difficulties come, suddenly happiness comes. So fate is capricious. Equestrain. Equestrain. It's related to horseback riding. Equus in Latin, it means horse. Equestrain is coming from equus, which, uh, uh, which is related to horse. Old statues of military heroes. Military heroes wear are frequently equestrian. That means in this sculpture, men always sit nobly upright on a horse. Right. But uh, this, uh, the, the, how the horse uh, is depicted, it, there are some meanings on how the horse's stances vary. Right. Whether the rider was killed in the battle or survived, was victorious or defeated, or traditionally stands in four, three, two hooves on the ground. How they are depicted, whether they were killed, whether they died, whether they were victorious, they were defeated, etc., etc. The the depiction would be uh, would be would be shown in terms of how many how how the horse is standing on on four hooves or three hooves or two hooves, etc. Lupine lupine is related to related to wolves, like a wolf, wolfish. Doctors reported that the boy showed lupine behavior, such as snarling and biting and walking with his knees bent in a kind of crouch. Wolves have a very highly organized social structure, where uh, the leaders and followers are very clearly distinguished in the in the wolves groups, right? Even, even in dogs also, you can see this uh, lupine pattern. There are a lot of stories of children. Raised by who? Wolves. There is this one famous story. Romulus is the legendary founder of Rome. Okay. It is believed that he has been raised by wolves. Bovine. Bovine means sheep. Vovis. Vovis is sheep in, uh, is sheep in Latin. Sheep was one of the first animals to be domesticated. Only the dog uh, is known to be tamed earlier than sheep. Generally, earlier they were valued for their milk, uh, their skin and their meat. This was around 12,000 years ago. The earliest evidence was from Iraq, the place around Iraq. Their sheep were shown. But it was around 1500 BC only. Where, uh, when the sheep uh, were started, uh, they started uh, domesticating sheep for wool. Earlier it was not for wool, it was for milk, skin and meat. Right. Next. Bovine we have discussed. 
ornithology or ornithologist ornithologist is someone who studies birds john james audubon he is a great painter of birds of early america he is also a very great ornithologist ornith it is coming from greek which means bird ornithology is the study of birds amateur ornithology is is birding or bird watching it's a very popular pastime across the world lot of people they pursue it they take pictures uh, they take uh, they follow birds etc etc a lot of field guides also right then next is serpentine serpentine is like a snake snake is long very curved winding right like a serp- like a snake or serpent in shape or movement the great wall of china which is uh, one regarded as one of the greatest uh, constructions of all time it has got lot of curves a lot of windings right so it is serpentine it is around 4000 miles it is so long and it has so many curves it is we call it serpentine a snake moves by curving and winding all along the ground right so this these roads are called serpentines the roads generally which are around the, around the mountains around the hills right let's there is one more word called simian this is to do with monkeys s a m i a n let me write it down s i m i a n simian this is related to monkeys simian antics okay latin latin for ape or latin for monkey is simia s i m i a simia which means snub nose the nose of mon- monkeys are little flat right so that is called snub nose biologists study lot of simian viruses okay viruses that are originating from monkeys and apes for the cure of aids and other diseases right human babies often cling to their mothers in a simian way right like, like how babies of monkey they cling to their mother human babies also cling to their uh, mothers likewise that is called simian let's get to the next word which is crypt crypt we all know what is cryptocurrency right what is cryptocurrency it is kind of hidden currency it is not the regular currency which is used by a lot of banks etc right crypt crypt in crypt is coming from greek which means hidden to encrypt a message is to encode it that is to hide its meaning to hide its meaning in a some code language okay whatsapp uh, frequently says right we encrypt all the messages that means even if someone in between catches the message they will not be able to they will not be able to understand what the message is about encrypting if you play, take any word you encrypt it that means you you make some changes to the word or you make some changes so that uh, so that uh, you will not see the same word and you will find something else that is encryption encryption of password etc that means you make it hidden so that uh, any new person except the sender and receiver any new person in between they will not understand this code language they will not understand what is it about that is called encrypt that is that is making it hidden crypt is hidden crypto always means there is something hidden about it crypt crypt uh, crypt was uh, crypt has got another meaning which is a room completely or partially underground especially under the main floor of a church because it is hidden okay it is hidden under the church it is called the crypt encrypt encrypt we just discussed to convert a message that is actually encrypt we all know crosswords right crosswords are the puzzle games uh, especially in english where they will give some clues and uh, you have to understand what exactly is the word and fill the puzzle right so there is something called cryptic crossword cryptic crossword because the puzzles are kind of hidden or, or the hints are kind of hidden the hints are not uh, are not very synonymous with the words they use give hints in some cryptic way that's why they are called uh, cryptic cross, crosswords decrypt decrypt is, is is the opposite of encrypt encrypt once you hide and uh, hide a message you encrypt a message and send it and the receiver actually has to decrypt whatever is the same code language he has to open up with some key that is called decryption okay encryption today it usually refers to complex procedure performed on electronic text to make sure that wrong people okay even if they find the message they are not going to make sense out of it cryptic cryptic means mysterious 
very puzzling that is scripting hieroglyphic writings were entirely cryptic what are these hieroglyphic writings these are picture or symbolic writings or uh, representing in pictures or symbols which were especially used in ancient egypt and other writing systems around there these are hieroglyphic writings and uh, these are cryptic and that's why people are not able to uh, decode them what exactly was there head cryptography cryptography is the art of secret writing encoding and uh, encoding and uh, decoding that secret writings that is called cryptography crypt plus graphy graph we had discussed earlier means writing crypt is secret that secret writing secret plus writing secret writing these are called cryptographers ab abs means away this is coming from latin away or off abuse abuse is to use it in the wrong way that is abuse away they to use it in not from the right way there is something off that is abuse abuse is use of something in the wrong way ab ab plus use using which is away from the regular use abuse ab plus use okay this is abuse now you know right abuse ab plus duct 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 is leading duct is leading we discussed this earlier also ab duct leading away leading away from that means it is kind of kidnapping abducting is kidnapping kidnapping illegally aberrant behavior error error is error aberrant ab plus error this is wandering away from what is that is acceptable aberrant behavior aberrant behavior is more of erratic behavior more of error like behavior more of behavior that is not acceptable by general public okay it will be kind of absurd behavior abscond abscond is to escape to escape in secret they discovered the next morning that their guest had absconded with most of the gold the guest who was staying there at their home he ran away he left in secret ab is away okay going away abscond is going away in secret that is abscond abstemus abstemus is moderate moderate or ascetic in terms of drinking or uh, eating etc is refrained especially in consumption of food and alcohol so here also ab ab is away abstemus is staying away from consumption of food or alcohol lot of monks or lot of saints they demanded this abstemious uh, lifestyle which is full of uh, poverty obedience full of hard work etc across all cultures be it in christianity be it in hinduism be it in muslim everywhere right abstemious lot of be it in buddhism jainism this culture ascetic culture is is there uh, across everywhere temes temetus temetus is strong being staying away from eating or drinking which is moderately eating okay that is abstemious absent absent we all know it is staying away is not present is not existing not present etc abstract abstract is the consideration abstraction is the consideration of a thing or idea without associating with a particular example this is an abstract theory an abstract work on art abstract work of an art etc tract tract is pulling right like tractor tractor is something that pulls that abstract is away from this uh, tract something away from from a thing or an idea abstract means something pulled or drawn away abstract art is art that has moved away from painting objects of the ordinary physical world in order to something to show something which is beyond it theories are generally uh, abstractions a theory about economics uh, for instance an abstract theory about economics may pull back 
to take a broad view that somehow explains all of economics. These are abstract theories. Okay. Or you might see abstract of a research paper. A research paper, let's say, would be 5 10 pages long. An abstract, abstract of a scientific article is generally a one paragraph summary of its contents. That is, the basic findings pulled out of, pulled away, pulled out of, pulled out of uh, the article in a one paragraph summary. Right? That is abstract. Abs, away. Tract is pull. Pull away. That is abstract. Abstruse. Abstruse is hard to understand. It is deep. Uh, it is, it is, uh, it is deep and uh, it is complex. That is abstruse. Trust is to conceal. Abs is to heavy. Is, is meant by, uh, abs, ab means heavy. Right? It is concealed. It is uh, hidden. It, it is hidden. Scientific writing is often filled with the kind of apps to special vocabulary that is necessary for exact and precise, precise uh, descriptions. For example, okay, the scientific uh, uh, scientific papers they are generally already all difficult and they become more difficult because of this apps to vocabulary. Apps to is deep, complex which are hidden kind of uh, words, okay? Abstruse thought also is the same thing. Cool, friends. I think uh, we have covered around another 100 words. Uh, please practice. Please go through the video in detail. And uh, uh, if you have any confusion, please comment. Please reach out to me. Right. All the best. We'll cover more words in our next session. Thank you. Bye-bye.